Data log of Celian contact, 2667, Chief General Torlak. Torlak took what remained of his fleet and hastily fled the system formerly known as Draxus. His fleet was now no more than a handful of ships. The remaining ships could barely be used to defend a simple refueling station. They were battered and low on ammunition stores. Their shield generators took a beating, and the power they generated was being used for other services such as life support and engine power. Those that survived the onslaught had craters in their hulls, and some had entire sections of their outer hulls missing. Torlak was distraught at the sight before him, and his fleet continued on past Demira and Anmira, the two sister planets they invaded first of this new species. Set a course for Lassus, he ordered, and returned to his quarters. The fleet was still on alert, but the further they fled, their unease subsided. He met with a computer technician on his way, and inquired about the status of the data they had received from Bralo. Yes, Chief. The technician spoke nervously. We are currently diving through the data as we speak, but I must say, we are having a difficult time translating the data. What have you gathered so far? We have found what looks to be star coordinates. Our team is currently comparing them to our database, and then we may be able to find more targets for our fleets to attack. That is good work, uh, Alan. Yes, he replied with a slight fluster. Alan, that is good work on your team's part. I expect great things from this. Yes, Chief, Alan replied happily. We just need to connect it to our database for a complete comparison. Is there any other data you've found? He asked, urging to change the subject. We have learned what they call themselves in some of their history, but the rest is still being downloaded. Very well, Torlak replied. Continued with your work. Alan gave a bow and continued on his way. Torlak, on the other hand, continued on toward his room where he was met with a large bed and the finest covers the fleet could afford. He refreshed himself and readied himself for bed. It was a long and drawn-out engagement. He almost forgot what his bed felt like. Before he knew it, he was taken into slumber the moment his head touched the pillow. Several days followed and when he made his way to the bridge, he was met with a new yet familiar system, Lassus. This system was five jumps away from the system that was home to Demira and Anmira. He didn't know the name of the colony because it was so recently founded. But after sifting through some of the data found on Draxus, it was named Dima, and that's what he suggested they call it. Aside from Dima, there was not much data beyond the Draxus system for their coordinates log. He thought the technicians would have more than the two systems uploaded by now. But their reasoning was that their systems were too slow and that it needed to take time. They had already connected to their central navigation archives to map the coordinates, so it wasn't clear to him why it was taking so long. He let it go, but ordered that they report any new findings within the data. Returning to the hollow map in the center of the bridge was the Lassus system. It is a binary star system home to a series of four gas giants and a lone rocky planet in between the four. The planets orbited a fair distance from their stars, and the two closest gas giants were orbited by many moons. The lone rocky planet, Lasu, followed them. It had no moon, and the planet was nothing more than a husk, but was home to a large fuel refinery depot that orbited it, and a large population of depot workers totaling around 50 million. The final two gas giants orbited beyond Lasu, and they had a brilliant display of rings. This was one of the largest forms of resources for materials, while the gas giants operated as an abundant source for their fuel refinery. Torlak ordered the ships down to Lasu after speaking to their flight control. They were granted access, and all ships were able to find a docking port for their respective sizes. When all ships were docked, Torlak granted them time off for the duration of their stay, as he also ordered ship repairs. It wasn't his money he was spending, but that of the military. Surely they would understand the need to repair somewhat still serviceable ships. Torlak needed a break, and he already passed some sizable fleets at some of the previous systems, so he felt relative ease here on Lasu. He silently walked about the station and was greeted by all the citizens of the station. His title was evident on a cloth he wore around his neck, and the markings stitched on the sleeves of his uniform. 
It was a red cloth with a gold-embroidered star and the planet of Celia with the land masses depicted on it, and on his sleeves, four red chevrons that contrasted the white and gold of his outfit. It wasn't long before he arrived at a fancy-looking restaurant with a multitude of naval servicemen mingling outside the establishment. Many looked ragged as they spoke, and their facial features sagged from what he can only suspect was from stress. He walked towards the entrance and met the gaze of one of the junior war chiefs, a title appointed to those who pilot many of their fighters. Ah, General, what are you doing here? One of the young ones asked. Seeking some good food with this much-needed break. How are you all faring? He asked the group. General, be honest. What do you make of the enemy? We weren't on the ground, so we don't know what they're truly like. Another pilot asked. Torlak pondered the inquiry. I can't divulge too much, but what I can offer is that perhaps we should have greeted them on friendly terms. He said in a remorseful tone, They have something to fight for, but so do we. I only hope the War Council will see that. The group of pilots nodded, knowing that their enemy had something to fight for and are willing to die for it. The only question that came to mind was, how far are they willing to go to retaliate? He bid the group farewell and proceeded into the establishment. The furnishings were of higher class relative to the rest of the station. It wasn't high by Selian home standards, but it was very much so here. He was soon escorted by a waiter that brought him to one of the rooms in the back that were reserved for the highest ranking officials. He was met by several chief commanders and captains of the various vessels of his battle group and they welcomed him to sit. Among the group was the recently promoted Chief Captain Dalagon, someone whom he thought perished on Draxis and was consuming himself with a drink. I remember you, Dalagon, correct? The teary-eyed Selian in question lifted his head from the table and met the general's gaze. His eyes shot wide and tried to stand to meet him, but he was asked to sit back down. General, what bring you here? His eyes were still swollen from tears and the stiff drink he had before him. I found it fitting to at least take some time off, especially what we all went through some time ago, Torlak said, trying to ease the tension. Many of the commanders and captains nodded in agreement. Some already had their food and took small bites of it, as if their appetite had gone elsewhere. It was just a mix of meat and vegetables on the side. He took his seat and ordered a small but refined meal when one of the commanders spoke aloud. To think our vessels were bested by such a savage race. His eyes were red, and the stench of fermented grains filled the room. That's right, that's right, another supported. What even were those weapons? They destroyed my brother's ship like it was nothing but wood and adhesives. What do you think of them, General? What would you call them? His voice was obnoxious. Clearly, the room was deep in the inebriating substance. He looked at the bottle they all shared, Philo's finest, a drink of fermented grains and processed to nothing short of lethal for the average Selian. Ah, no wonder, he thought before addressing their concerns. They call themselves Terrans. What kind of name is Terran anyway? One of the captains asked. A name we gathered from the data chief commander Brallo bravely delivered to us before we fled the system. The group grew quiet at the mention of the commander. He was widely regarded as the best ground tactician the Selian military had produced. Even in his darkest hour, he was noble. He was an honorable man who fended off the legendary Runian attack force, a group that's so vile and savage that it would take a god to smite them. But all it took was Brallo, a commander said, raising his cup to which the others followed, including Torlak. To Brallo for Selia. They continued late into the night reminiscing fallen comrades and tales of old passed down to them until closing. They were escorted by fellow war chiefs to their respective destinations, leaving only Dalagon and Torlak. Where is your ship, Dalagon? He only pointed in a vague direction and Torlak supported him until he met a crewman who recognized his captain. Let me take him, General. Torlak did as he said and passed off Dalagon, not until the person in question turned to face Torlak, his eyes filled with momentary clarity. Tell me, General, what happened to the group by the gas giant? What happened to Namu? Tears swelled up again on the corners of his eyes, still staring deep into Torlak. He... his group is suspected to have perished. I'm sorry. 
Dalagon held back his tears, and he was finally led away by the crewmen. The sounds of his cries grew faint the further they departed. Torlak knew of the two, albeit briefly. He knew Dalagon and Namu to be close, like brothers. But during the attack on Draxus, Namu was designated to attack the research stations by the gas giant, only for it to be more heavily defended than he originally believed. Dalagon was part of the attack on the compound, and they were one of the few that were able to flee the sudden assault from the enemy. The only other ships that were able to rendezvous with them were the singular ships that were staged away from the complex. As they left, he remembered they were informed that the group by the gas giant had perished and their signals ceased transmitting. That meant only one thing and believed that he had met his end, hoping that he took out as much of the enemy as he could. It's all he would want for a warrior of his grade. Torlak returned to his ship, spending the days it took to repair in leisure. By the time their ships were ready, several weeks had passed. He communicated with the nearby sectors for enemy movement, but found nothing unusual. The enemy had yet to retaliate. He wished to urgently return home and bring news of the data they had obtained. Navigator, he ordered, plot a course for Sela. It is time I meet with the War Council. Of course, General. Their ship traveled to the edge of the system, and a large circular metal structure floated in the void. As they approached, they were hailed by the station that was attached to the structure. Halt your advance. This gate is an entry into core cell in space. State your name, ship, and reason for travel. Chief General Torlak of the Father's Prime Fighter Carrier, I am required to meet with the War Council. There was a pause. Access granted. Welcome back, General. You'll have approximately eight systems to go before you reach Sela. Thank you, Torlak replied. The large structure, as ancient as it looked, lit up and a fissure in space materialized, and the circumference of the portal extended to the inner edges of the structure. The diameter was approximately 16 kilometers. For a gate on the outer edges of Selian core space, it was one of the larger ones. When the portal stabilized, his ship, along with the rest of his group, followed through the vibrant portal back into the space that gave them the greatest comfort. Incoming transmission, subroutine Athene, report, non-sensitive data released, original coordinates deleted, falsified records uploaded to newly synced archive, beginning archive download, new coordinates downloaded, star map archive updated, new coordinates mapped, Verbus, Trill, Villo, Cerno, Aloma, Lassus, Continuing spatial coordinate mapping, lexicon pass routine active, 33% complete, masking routine stable, recipient Athena, data sent, ending transmission.